Hello, hello, Sarah Emmert here again. Um, I am going to go ahead and show you a very quick tutorial about how to turn your Google Slides into an interactive PDF. This is super simple. It does take a little bit of time to create all of it, but um, once you get going, it kind of is a quick process, and this is great to make an interactive PDF for your lower kids or your more significant disabilities. Uh, it's just a good way to bounce around and to give immediate feedback on correct and incorrect answers. Uh, this does not keep score, so um, those facilitating it obviously would have to keep score for the student, or it's just a great practice. So. I have already created my entire slides. What you want is you want your um, starting page. Click here to start page is what I like to have it. My title page, I love to have title pages. And then you would go through and create your questions. And I like to number them. You don't have to do that for your kiddos. It just kind of helps them flow through and then those who are help facilitating it could tell whether or not the answer was right or wrong on what question. Then you're going to have to create a page that is a correct answer page and an oops try again page. Uh, I love to use little bitmojis. You can um, actually get bitmojis for free. I have a Google extension and I love it. So something to think about. You would actually duplicate these two slides, the yes and oops slide, after every single question. So this is where you're going to link your slides to each other. All right, so let's go ahead and start at the top. And my first you want to hit click to start. You can put an arrow. My kiddos click wherever on the screen. So if they don't click in the exact spot that you have linked, then it won't move to the next slide. So how do I get around that? I love shapes. I use shapes like crazy. This is actually my favorite thing. So I'm going to just drag over the entire screen. That way my kids don't get confused. Wherever they click, they click to start. I'm going to actually make this transparent. I don't want it to show. I just want it to be where they click. So it's like their button. Then I'm going to click the link right here. Insert link. I don't know if you guys knew this was here. It is amazing. So my big shape is going to be linked. I'm going to link it to what? Question one. So page slide two. You can do next slide, last slide, slide two. I'm going to click apply. Now, when my students click on the screen, and if I put it in present mode, it actually does the same concept. So if they click on it, it's going to take them to the next slide. So they're going to get ready. Now, my part where you want the yes and the no's. Yes, you got it right. No, try again. Here's, I have my question. I don't want them to be able to click on any part of my screen except the answer. So again, I'm going to link the correct answer. I love the shapes. I'm gonna pull out the shape. I'm going to try to make it big since my kids click, like I said, all over. I'm going to make it transparent. I do, you can have a border to where they pop out, right? Um, and make it look like a button. So if I did leave a border, this would look like a button. Sometimes I leave that, sometimes I kind of make the border transparent. Now I'm going to take that shape and I'm going to link it. What slide I want to link it to slide number three. You rock because they got it correct. So I'm going to find slide number three and click apply. Done. It is now linked to page three, slide three. You could do this individually for each right and wrong answer. Because mine are kind of already clustered, which is great, I'm going to just make it gigantic. And if they click anywhere over here, it's going to take them to the wrong slide. So which is slide number four? So I'm going to insert my link, slides and presentation, and I want slide number four. I know that because. Slide number four has a four right next to it. Okay, and I hope that applied. It did not because I did not click save. So 
and apply and then now it tells me you can edit it you can turn it off you can um, copy the link so here's what we do next we go to slide three and i want it to go to the next question i have it already linked so again if you click on it that big old square is there you can just do the arrow make um, just the arrow linkable like i said my kids click everywhere so if i click on it my link already showed up down here uh, if you guys can see that so it's linked to page five why because i want to go to the next question right if i go to page four oops they got it wrong i want them to click and try again this one is actually backtracked so if we look this one is linked to page two because i want them to try the question again so they go back again this is as simple as it gets the hard part is making the slides. Then here's question two. Again, this whole section is linked to seven because, oh, those are the wrong answers. This one is linked to page six. Why? Because that's the right answer. So if I had this in present mode, which you can do it in present mode also, I'm gonna click to start. Um, oh, I click, oh, try again, it takes me back to the same slide i made sure to link it that way quarter is correct yes try or continue it's going to take me to the next question it's good to number them just because it helps you keep track of when you're linking them also so these are wrong i can click anywhere in the screen because that's what i made it to do because i did the whole big shape and then penny is correct oh you rock click to continue and then it just bounces back and forth um, and I want it to be able to bounce back and forth. And then that's kind of um, giving them the right or the wrong answer, which is awesome. And then all you do once you have it all the way done, um, the trick at the bottom when you're doing this is they don't number the last slide. So you have to make sure it says the last slide. And that is what I have noticed. So this one's a quarter and then see how it says last slide. Now this one, if I click on it, I can bounce it um, back up to 23. You see how that kind of works. So the first and the last slide are not numbered. That's just something you kind of have to look for. And then you're all done. So once those are all linked, like I said, it does take a little time. You click File, Download, PDF. And it will load, look like this. So here's my PDF. It says PDF in the top corner, so I know it's a PDF, and I can assign this directly to my kids. They don't have to be in present mode. It doesn't mess with any of the links. They would do exactly what it says. See, it says click. I'm going to click. Takes me to the next slide. Now, of course, I could scroll through this, but um, and then watch if I click. Takes me. Oh, wrong. Try again. It's going to take me. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then I'm going to click the correct answer. Oh, it took me to that. Now it took me. So the links are automatically saved. It's still part of that. And it will bounce you around just like um, you want them to. Super easy, super quick. It is uh, time consuming to make, obviously. But once you get them made, it goes pretty quick. All right. And then you can go ahead and assign that straight into your Google Classroom. You would assign the PDF. Um, and then they can click on it and bounce around just like I showed you. So I hope this helps. Um, you take your Google Slides, you add your links, which is just when you're on the image, you can do any image link whatsoever, um, and then insert that link. So, and then download as PDF. Alrighty, I hope this helps.